Hi, Eric here from Stinger Electronics. Today we're gonna to show you how to install a Stinger infotainment unit into this 2020 Jeep Wrangler JL. This installation kit allows you to fully integrate a Stinger infotainment system, which is gonna retain the Jeep's features while adding a bigger, clearer screen. It's gonna increase the audio quality and give you additional camera inputs. The Stinger infotainment units are packed with a ton of great features in a sleek, modern design. Let's get started. Today, we're gonna to be working in this 2020 Jeep Wrangler. After we're done the installation, the driving experience is gonna be completely upgraded. It's gonna have a 10 inch screen, video from up to five additional cameras, a vehicle information app, and an upgraded sound system. Before we begin, let's review what we'll need. The Stinger Jeep radio replacement kit includes the Heighten infotainment system, the Jeep dash kit, and the wiring harnesses. We recommend you have these tools handy to complete the install plastic pry tools, Phillips screwdriver, ratchet with extension and sockets, Forx wrenches, crimpers, and a dash snake. The first step is to begin taking apart the Jeep so that we can install the kit. We're gonna start here by removing the knee bolster. That's the piece of plastic down here by your knees. You can actually just reach up under the steering column and pull with your hands, or you can use a plastic pry tool if that helps you. And work your way down both sides. And that's just clipped in, so we'll just set that aside. Now we can remove the climate control assembly and stop start button. Taking your panel pry tool and getting behind this. Once you pull it out a little bit, you can get your fingers right behind the start stop button and just pull on that panel. That allows this whole panel to pop right out. Put my panel pry tool down here and pull on the bottom of this corner. Be sure to disconnect any harnesses that are connected. Now we can set this module aside for later. With the climate control panel out of the way, we can now grab a screwdriver and remove the two Phillips screws that secure the factory radio into the dash. Pulling out on the bottom, carefully working our way around the edges, we can release the trim. It holds the factory radio and screen in place. There's two more screws holding the radio in place at the top and two more at the bottom. Now you can remove the factory display and disconnect all the harnesses that are plugged in on the back. You have to push in on the end of this connector to release it and then swing the lever back. Push in on the locking tab to remove the USB connector and remove the factory radio. Now you're gonna to wanna to grab your panel popper tool because we're going to pry up and remove the factory speaker cover here. And we're also going to remove these panels that allow us to completely remove this handle, which allows us to access this panel for routing of the GPS antenna. Using your panel pry tool, carefully go underneath the factory speaker cover, lift up. Using the panel pry tool, carefully lift this panel. And we'll also pry open the lower cover that gives us access to the lower 10 millimeter bolt. Lift this panel out of the way and use your 10 millimeter socket with extension and remove the bolt. Now with the long 10 millimeter bolts removed from the handle, grab it and give it a good pull to remove it from the Jeep. This is gonna give us a clear channel to route the GPS antenna down through the dash. Taking our panel pry tool, we're gonna to remove one more piece of plastic from this left side. We're gonna remove this panel here, which allows us to route the GPS antenna and the microphone cable down. If you push on the panel here, you can get a little access, sneak your tool in without damaging anything. Pop the panel out, moving the clips as you go down. Set this panel aside. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove this piece of plastic so that we can run the GPS antenna through this trim. Take your T20 Torx and remove these two lower bolts. We're gonna remove a T20 Torx from here and one from here that allow these panels to just pop out a little bit more making the GPS antenna routing a little bit easier. That makes this piece loose. we have got this guy here. That just allows this piece a little bit of installation room. These Jeeps have a USB connection inside the center console that we have to get to. So if we open the glove box, there's two T20 screws that we remove from here. This allows us to remove the back panel and get it to the USB connection inside. 
Now this back panel is just going to pop off. With the back of the center console removed, we now have access to the USB port that we'll connect to in a moment. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the factory glove box so that we can make connectors from our kit to the CAN bus that are located behind the glove box. We're going to start by opening the glove box, pull the handle and lower the glove box. On the left side, there's a soft release tab. Pull that toward the back of the Jeep. That's going to disconnect it. Inside the top of the glove box is a little lever. You smash that up. That's going to allow you to bring the glove box down and remove it from the Jeep. That completes the disassembly of our Jeep. Now we can head to the bench, make all of our plug and play wiring connections, assemble the brain and bracket, and then we can install it into this Jeep. One of the great things about this kit is that it is 100% plug and play. You're not gonna cut any of the wiring in the Jeep. You don't even have to make wiring connections between our kit's harnesses. It's all plug in. We're gonna begin by mounting the 10 inch display into the mounting bracket for the Jeep. The installation process would be the same if you're using the Elevate, you just use the other piece of plastic. We're gonna grab the height and screen and set it down on our protective cloth so we don't scratch anything. Meet the display onto the screen and install the four screws. Take six of these orange plastic clips that came with the kit and install those onto the dash bracket. Now our display is set up and ready to go in the Jeep, so we'll set that aside for now. Now we're ready to assemble the dash mounting bracket. This is going to secure everything into the dash of the Jeep. Take this trim plastic, you'll notice a part number. This goes at the top. These two brackets are actually labeled in here. It says RH for right hand or LH for left hand. So RH right hand is going to go on the right hand side of the vehicle. And now we'll install two screws to hold that into place. Take the bracket that's labeled LH for left hand, put that on the left hand side of the vehicle, and install the two screws on that side. This gives us a nice place for our Radio Pro Advanced module to be mounted into place. So grab four zip ties and we're going to install those here. Now we can just tighten up the zip ties to hold the module in place. Using your crimpers or snips, trim the excess zip ties. Now we're going to take our pack link module and use a piece of the double-sided tape that was included with the kit. Apply that to the back of the pack link and then stick it to the front of the Radio Pro Advanced module right here. Now we're ready to take the brain of our Stinger infotainment unit and mount it into the mounting bracket. Holding it with the logos facing up, navigation only and Sirius XM, slide it into the back of the bracket like this. It's gonna sit right on the back of the Radio Pro Advanced module and then slide it up until your screw holes align right here and install your four mounting screws. Now we can begin connecting the harnesses between the Stinger infotainment unit, the pack link, and the Radio Pro Advanced module. Now we'll grab the main harness from the kit and locate the two connectors where the heat shrink says radio, 16 pin radio and 10 pin radio. I'm gonna plug those two harnesses into the back of the Stinger brain. Now we're ready to make the connections from the harness to the Radio Pro Advanced module. This 12 pin connector plugs into one of these two ports, depending on whether the vehicle is amplified or non-amplified. This particular Jeep has a subwoofer, which means it's amplified. So we're going in this first connector. This twisted braided connection here comes through here and plugs into the middle of the module. Power connector comes up through, plugs in at the top of the module. A large connector with many wires comes through and plugs on this side. Finally, the harness labeled pack link is gonna come up and plug into the pack link. For the next step, we're going to grab the multimedia input harness for the Stinger unit. Harness labeled OEM aux audio. Remove the plastic covers that were protecting the RCA connectors and make your connections. This harness then plugs into the back of the Stinger unit. 
Now we'll grab the four pin harness with the input labeled mic. This is going to be because we're using the external microphone in this installation. This clips into the stinger unit here. We're gonna grab this six pin connector, which has our steering wheel control input and plug that into the back of the stinger unit as well. The one labeled SWI is your steering wheel input. Grab the 3.5 millimeter connector labeled steering wheel control and connect that in here. Now we're going to take the shorter six inch 10 pin connector cable. There's two 10 pin connection cables. One's 18 inches, one is six. We're using the six inch cable here. It's going to connect into either of the ports on the pack link. And then it's gonna plug into the Radio Pro Advanced module here. Now we'll take the 18 inch 10 pin to 10 pin harness, fish that through here and connect it to the pack link module. And connect the other end into your HD camera retention module. Now we're gonna take the HDMI cable that's included with your kit and plug into the HD out port on the HD camera retention module. Now we're gonna flip this whole assembly over so that we can install our two LVDS cables here and here, the power and USB. Now we're gonna connect in the LVDS power and USB cables. So now we'll take these two cables, we'll route them through the kit so they can connect to the display. Now the last connection we're gonna make here is the HDMI cable into the back of our stinger unit. And then because the dash is very tight inside the Jeep, we're gonna to need to bring these cables up close to the module and zip tie everything so it's nice and compact. Now take one of the included zip ties and pass it through one of the side brackets and up over your RCAs and other wires and down through the other bracket. Then bring the other end of the zip tie over and secure it into place. Just gonna trim off the excess. All right, we've got the wires all tightened up on the brain. We've got the display in the kit. Now we're ready to head back to the Jeep and finish prepping it for install. We're going to remove the factory USB connector and place it up here out of the way. Plug in our USB connector, route the USB cable through here, carefully tuck it in along this edge. Now we're gonna take this long harness that has the two T harnesses on it, one white, one green, and we're gonna make connections to the vehicle's CAN bus connectors. When making your CAN connections to the green and white CAN modules, you can plug into any open locations. If there aren't any open locations, simply plug the connector in and then take the factory connector that was there and plug into our T harness. In this case, we have plenty of open positions, so we'll just choose one and connect there. There's no factory connector here, so we don't need anything plugged into this T. Notice, notice the connectors on this T are green and the connectors on this T are white. You're gonna plug the white connectors into the green connector. See all these connectors are white. You're gonna match the green connectors here and the white with the green connectors. Just plug into any available port. And since there is no factory connector, we don't have to connect to that T. Now we can take our USB cable and our CAN wire cable and we're gonna route these up through the dash behind the factory air vents to where the stinger module is gonna be located in the dash. There's not a lot of space inside the dash of this Jeep, so once you get your wires to where you need to connect them, we're gonna take the excess wiring and push this back inside the dash. Just take these CAN bus wires and just tuck this back behind the factory glove box location. Now we're up here on top of the Jeep to mount the GPS antenna. We are gonna go ahead and set that there for just a second. And we're gonna take the included plate, remove the backing, stick that right here on top of the Jeep. Then we can take and place the GPS antenna right on top of the mounting plate. And we're gonna run the antenna just here, tucking it along this edge. I'm just gonna pass that back through here. And now we're gonna tuck it in here along the plastic trim panels. Now we're gonna pull this trim panel down just a little bit, which is gonna let us tuck this GPS antenna up where the factory wiring is. Try to avoid where the screw holes are that you're gonna screw the screws back in in just a moment. We're going to be installing the external microphone for this installation. To do this, we've attached the clip to the microphone. Now we're gonna take the wire and just tucking it over the headliner here. 
clip the clip onto the headliner and then tuck the microphone cord up above the headliner. Work your way along, tucking the entire cord in all the way to the edge. And then now this connector can be run down the A pillar along with the factory wiring. Just gonna tuck it behind the factory connectors to keep things out of the way when we reinstall that, that pillar. Now with the external microphone cable and the GPS antenna routed to the A-pillar, we're gonna finish running them down the A-pillar to where we're gonna mount the chime module under the dash. Then we can take all three of those wires together and route them up to the dash where we're gonna mount the stinger height. Under the steering column, we have a pretty convenient place to mount our chime module. We basically wanna bolt it right to this bar right here. Uh, it does have an included mounting bracket with two holes. Some Jeeps do not have this bracket populated. So if this is not here, there's an empty hole. You can take the bracket and the supplied mounting hardware and simply thread it through the hole. Because this Jeep does have a bracket here, we're gonna remove that bolt and use that to attach our mounting bracket. First, we're gonna take the bracket off of the chime speaker. Since that bolt is there, we're gonna remove it and reinstall our bracket with the bolt. Now we're going to route the microphone, the GPS antenna, and the chime module cable up through the dash. We're going to use a dash snake to make this part a lot easier. We're just going to go ahead and pass it straight down through this opening, down by where we have the chime speaker located. Get all my wires and connect those to the dash snake, and pull it back up through the dash. We're not quite done yet. We're gonna use the snake one more time and we're gonna bring these wires further up inside the dash. We go back down through this area, down to here. Bring these cables the rest of the way up the dash. Now we can finish bringing the cables up through the dash. Got a lot of excess cables here, so I'm gonna tuck some of this back inside the dash, leave just what we need to connect to the radio. With all of our wires routed to the mounting location in the dash, we can now go grab everything from the bench and begin to put everything in the vehicle. Now we're ready to make the wiring connections between our Stinger unit and the Jeep. Take our AM FM antenna adapter that plugs into the white connector. Our USB adapter plugs into the USB connector. We're going to want to plug this into the top port here on the back of our Stinger unit. The USB connection from the rear of the vehicle is going to plug into the lower port. Connect the antenna adapter. GPS antenna. The factory red cable is going to plug into the HD camera retention module. Take the chime wire that we ran up through the dash earlier and locate the small pigtail that's labeled chime and connect it there. We're gonna take the microphone cable that we ran and plug it into the microphone connector on the Stinger harness. Now we're gonna take the CAN bus harness that we ran from the glove box earlier Bring it here, disconnect these two connectors, and plug your harness into that. Before we place everything in, we are going to need to connect the main vehicle harness. Now we're ready to start tucking the wires inside the dash as neatly as possible so that we can place the module inside the dash. This is a tight squeeze in the dash, so now's the time to go ahead and grab your screw gun or your screwdriver, grab the seven millimeter bolts that hold the factory radio in place, and go ahead and put those in while we're holding the bracket in place.
Now we can connect the display to the two display cables, snap that onto the dash, turn the Jeep on and make sure that everything works. In order to get this Jeep to start, we're gonna to need to grab this HVAC panel that has our start stop button and reconnect it. We can turn the Jeep on and make sure that the Heighten powers up. Now that we know everything's working, we can turn the Jeep off. We can remove the HVAC panel. We're gonna reinstall the two screws below the radio and then reassemble the Jeep. Take our HVAC panel and reconnect the two connectors on it. Snap it into place. Now we can reinstall the knee bolster that goes below the steering column. It just has six clips that hold it into place. All right, now we can reinstall the A-pillar and all the screws that hold these plastics into place, along with the trim panel that we removed from this side of the dash. Now we can grab the A-pillar with the handlebar and reinstall it and the two 10 millimeter bolts. Lower the steering wheel, make it easier to get to this other one. Take the speaker grill and reinstall that. Just the four clips, clip it back into place. And now we can reinstall this plastic piece on the side of the dash. So to secure this back panel on, we're gonna open up the center console and reinstall the two Torx bolts that go right here. Now we can grab the glove box and reinstall it. Just take the clips from the bottom, align those up and lift the glove box into place. Then reattach the slow opening lever on the side by sliding it toward the front of the Jeep. That completes the installation of our Stinger Heighten infotainment system in this 2020 Jeep Wrangler. Thanks for watching.